This is the Callahan Death Machine that drew all Impact Wrestlers Wrestler of the Year, Moment of the Year, Match of the Year, and you are listening to the Wrestling Epicenter. Thumbs up, thumbs down. So welcome to this week's Impact Wrestling Press Pass Podcast. This is Ross Foreman, and let's uh, open up his line and welcome Josh Matthews. Josh, how are you doing today? I'm good, Ross. How are you? I'm doing great. What, uh, Wonderful. What's going on in your world? Well, I think uh, before we get started, uh, I think Sammy had uh, something he wanted to, to say quickly. Um, sure. And, and then we can get back to our regular business. Hey, Josh, Sammy, you hey, there. Ross, how are you guys doing? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Sorry, I, I had you in mute for a second there. Yeah, I was making sure I wasn't muted. Before we get into this entire uh, media conference, before we get into everything, me and my character, this is coming from me, not as a performer. This is coming from me as a, a human being. Uh, the shootings that went down in El Paso and Dayton over the weekend are absolutely tragic. And it, it seems to be the thing in society right now in America that this trend keeps continuing with gun violence here and there and a lot of times, I think, as a society, we, we kind of push it to the side because it happens so much. It's become the regular. It's become the norm. And until it happens directly in your community, it, it's a feeling that I never thought I'd ever have to feel. And it's absolutely tragic to all the life that was lost, all the people that was injured, specifically this is something that I feel needs to be fixed. As, as a society, there has to be some sort of change that doesn't allow this to happen to anyone else, doesn't allow this to happen to any other community. And it's something that I, I, I'm, I'm really choked up about it, to be honest, because it's something that's bothered me for the past week, and it's always been on my mind, and I've been down in Dayton. And anything that anyone can do to donate to the Dayton Foundation, please do, because people are in dire need of help here right now. Well, thank you for that, uh, Sammy. I'll uh, turn it back over to Josh. You uh, have some news for us. Uh, yes, thanks, Sammy. Really appreciate that uh, coming from the heart of uh, Sammy Callahan. I, uh, I live in Ohio, so uh, I, I echo the sentiment uh, of what Sammy just said. Um, and with and that... Sorry to cut you off. I, I think the major problem is right now, and I, I kind of touched on this, is we don't realize how much it impacts people's lives until it happens in our own community. And it shouldn't be like that. We should be fighting against this in any community. It shouldn't have to happen in your community for you to want to make a difference. Like it, it sucks that it took this happening for so many people in this area to want to make a difference on this cause. And we need to make sure this doesn't happen to any other communities because it is absolutely terrible. And just seeing our city right now, Dayton, Ohio, be the way it is, is absolutely heartbreaking. But at the same point, seeing how everyone in this community has band together with the Dayton strong campaign is absolutely unbelievable. And, it just shows that there are good people still in the world and there, there are good communities looking to fight for their own. Yeah. And, uh, I think that, uh, there will be, uh, nothing but good people when, uh, impact wrestling returns to Chicago for bound for glory live on Sunday, October the 20th. Uh, we're certainly excited that tomorrow morning, uh, 12 PM Eastern standard time, uh, titanium packages, Front row seats and Golden Circle tickets will be on sale tomorrow uh, at impactwrestling.com. Uh, we are just uh, so excited about the weekend in Chicago. It's really going to get started on uh, Friday, October 18th. Um, we've been kind of teasing that we're going to do something, um, and then uh, that's become official. So on the 18th in South Bend, uh, we will have a live event. Uh, streaming to either Impact Plus or Twitch. All those details are being worked out. Uh, but it'll be at South Bend, uh, a beautiful ballroom right in the heart of South Bend. Notre Dame has a bye week that week, so uh, we're looking forward to fill the void, and we'll be there Friday. Um, Saturday is going to be a fan fest that will be held at 115 Bourbon um, right in Chicago uh, through the efforts of not only Sammy Callahan, but 
Warrior Wrestling, Zello Pro, and Rise Wrestling. We think we're going to put on uh, an incredible show on Saturday the 19th. Not only wrestling, but also some, some different events. Uh, you guys can meet and greet the stars of Impact Wrestling. Uh, the best news is if you buy a titanium ticket for Bound for Glory, um, the Friday show and the Saturday show come with your tickets. Um, which is awesome, but if you want to uh, buy everything a la carte, obviously front row seats and Golden Circle tickets will be available tomorrow. Our Titanium will come with uh, some surprises, some photos. Uh, we're going to do like a five-pack photo uh, where you can trade. Um, there's going to be all sorts of different things that happen, exclusive photos, ringside photos, uh, post-show meet and greet, 10% off merch. Um, you're going to get to uh, enter the venue early. So uh, that's all if you buy your titanium package tomorrow when they go on sale at 12 p.m. Eastern. And don't wait because um, we had uh, an issue with Slammiversary where our titanium packages were gone in a matter of minutes. So, so they are popular. Don't sleep on those. Uh, I think they'll be gone by tomorrow. Uh, front row and golden circle will be what follows those. So we're really looking forward to that tomorrow. Uh, big day for all of us. Uh, tomorrow, 12 noon Eastern time, as we finalize everything that's going to happen live on pay-per-view on the 20th at Bound for Glory. And then I don't think people night. really realize how big of a deal this show actually is for Impact Wrestling. This building's a huge building, and it's Impact growing their brand and going back to Chicago for the first time. How many years? I don't even remember the last time they packed Chicago. Uh, I've been here for five years now, and I've never been to Chicago with Impact Wrestling. And Chicago is one of the hottest uh, territories in all professional wrestling right now. There's a lot of amazing companies, a lot of basic talent, and an awesome fan base uh, that I really got to know and become my second home over the past couple years. So we are going to be there the 20th. We want to see everybody there. Uh, we think that the Titanium package is, is certainly worth it with, with two other shows, and then you guys are going to get to see some of uh, Chicago's favorite independent wrestlers uh, live uh, on that show Saturday. So a lot of fun. Again, tomorrow it all gets started. Uh, let me just quickly run through what we have uh, tomorrow night on Impact Wrestling. Um, we're going to see Eddie Edwards versus Ace Austin, Jake Chris versus Aiden Prince, Madison Rain versus Alexa Nicole, The North versus LAX, Rhinos in Action, uh, Ty of Valkyrie versus Havoc, and I don't mean to rush through those matches and not give them the spotlight that they deserve because they are all great matches on an incredible show. But uh, we want to talk to Sammy. We want to talk about Found for Glory, Sammy's Chicago roots, um, and get into all the questions we have from all of you in the media. So, Ross, with that said, I'm going to hand it over to you, and i got to get back to work, buddy. Sounds good, Josh. Talk to you later. Thanks, guys. See ya. Hey, Sammy, let me throw it at you. Why do you think Chicago is such a strong wrestling market? Break it up, Ross. Say, say what you said one more time. I was going to ask you, why do you think Chicago is such a strong wrestling market? Because of a huge, huge, huge populace, and wrestling's always been big in Chicago. They've been striving for something big for the last 20 years, and over the past probably five or six years, it became one of the hotbeds of independent wrestling specifically, and I think it shows not just independent wrestling, wrestling on a major scale with other giant shows selling out there, Impact Wrestling bringing pay-per-views there, uh, that it's becoming one of the go-to places for wrestling in the United States right now. Sammy, you have a favorite uh, wrestling memory in uh, Chicago? I would have to say that one of the times after I left another company and showed up unannounced in Chicago after being tied down uh, to a system for years and years and years and being able to come back on a two day notice and nobody knowing it was one of the cool small that's also winning the AAW heavyweight championship three separate times, uh, having feuds there with Pentagon Jr., having feuds there with the likes of Eddie Kingston, the a lot of other major stars that uh have helped me become who I am in the last couple of years. All right. Well, we will, at this point, open up for media questions. Uh, star six to get in queue. Please identify yourself and your media outlet. Q&A session has started. To ask your question, please press star six. Sammy, before we take that first question, I will ask you, 
Uh, I assume you are a Chicago deep dish pizza fan. Giordano's in Chicago is the best pizza I've ever tasted in my entire life. And they just opened up one in Dayton, Ohio. So uh, I'm quite excited about that because it's by far the best Chicago deep dish pizza I've ever had in my life. All right. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you when you, we come to Chicago. Can we get a sponsorship from Giordano's? I know uh, the big machine Brian Cage likes it too. I've seen him eat two of the large pizzas in one setting before. What about Lou Malnati's? You've never had Lou Malnati's? I've never had it. All right. That's what we're doing in October. And then you can be the. Uh, what judge. kind of pizza do they have though? What kind of pizza? The how is their deep dish? Because uh, Giordano's puts the sauce on top. It's my blood. It's really good. I'll put Giordano's at about a B. You know, maybe B minus. I give an A to uh, Lou Malnati's. See, and we we started this out. I thought we could be friends on this. Now you just pissed me off, like always, Ross. Okay, let's just go to some uh, media questions. I think that's probably best for me. Exactly. Exactly. What do you want, international or or domestic caller? I don't care. This is your job, Ross. You put the people on the phone, and I answer the questions. I don't think it's that hard. Hey, Sammy and Ross, it's uh, the Yeti from the Irish Whip Podcast and Wrestling News Source, man. Um, the Yeti? Quick, your name is the yeah. Yeti? Is that on your birth certificate? Uh, it is. If it's on your birth certificate, I'd like to see this and shake your hand because I, that's a great name. It, if your parents named it's, you the Yeti, I'm very proud of them. It's it's a middle name, man. It was uh, let's just let's just say that uh, my parents are very very unique and very very Montana centric. Okay, I like it. <laughs> Hey, man, do you feel like the work that yourself and Tessa are, are putting in right now is being appreciated for the work that it really is? I think it's changed wrestling uh, already. You see it on other major companies uh, instantaneously after me and Tessa's match. Other people are going into intergender wrestling. I think Impact Wrestling is one of the first people that really took that chance and allowed a match like this to happen and set the wrestling world on fire. I'll put me and Tessa's view up against any other feud in all professional wrestling right now is one of the hottest things going. Do you think that's a testament both to your guys' experience in other companies and the passion that you guys have to make Impact succeed for what it is? I've actually always been a fan of intergender wrestling. We're speaking uh, truthfully. My company, The Wrestling Revolver, I book intergender matches every show because I don't believe wrestling should be looked at as male versus female. We should look at each other as superheroes, as Marvel characters. What would happen if Storm had to face the Incredible Hulk? What would happen if Black Widow had to fight Thor? Like, that's the kind of wrestling I like, and I like professional wrestling to be in that level of entertainment. Next level, right? This is, this is stuff that, that uh, not so much, I don't want to bring up other promotions, but this is the ability for somebody that is as physically talented as any male on the roster to get out there and, and show her shit with another human being that is next level. Yeah, is, that, am I that's correct where when I make have that? to look at this differently. Just, just you saying that is exactly how a lot of society look at this. They look exactly. at it like, oh, Tessa is a talented performer for a woman to be getting in there with a man. No, Tessa's a good professional wrestler. And even though I have my issues with her, I have my beef with her, and she'll never beat me, I still will say Tessa, Tessa Blanchard is one of the best professional wrestlers I've been in the ring with this year. Cool. Hey, Sammy and Ross, thanks again. I'm going to, I'm going to step out, but if we don't have too many more people in here, I'm going to jump in as always. Awesome. I kind of actually kind of disagree with the whole term intergender wrestling anymore. Like I feel like it, it, it doesn't get a shock value, but at the same point, we need to get rid of that term and just call it professional wrestling. Cause that's what it is. I'm going to keep, I'm going to, hey. oops, sorry, Eddie, I cut you off there. You can get back That's into good for you, Ross. Look at you. You're ruthless. I like this, Ross. If they stutter, if they take a second to say their question, you cut them off. That's how exactly. things go, Ross. Hey there, Sammy. It's uh, Mark Blake from the Pro Wrestling Post. Hi there. Pro Wrestling Post? Is that what you said? That's the, that's the one. Yep, that's the one. Okay, I got it. What do you got for me today, man? <laughs> Hello there. Um... In your most recent match against Tessa, uh, you, you, you both proved on a worldwide scale that inter- intergender wrestling is just believable wrestling. Do you think that that match has broken down the so-called rules for other companies to hold them kind of matches? Say your question one more time. You're kind of breaking up. 
Ah, oh, sorry, man. <clears throat> uh, your your last match against Tessa, you uh, you proved on a on a worldwide scale that intergender wrestling is just believable wrestling. Do you think your match has broken down the walls for other companies to hold matches just like that? Hundred percent. I think you've seen that in the days after our original intergender match main event and slam anniversary. Intergender wrestling right now is one of the biggest things in professional wrestling. No doubt. Absolutely no doubt. Um, just changing the subject slightly there, in, in, a, in an age now where um, different styles of wrestling are being debated online and frowned upon by a, a lot of the veterans, how do you stand? How do you feel about that? Maybe they should quit taking things so seriously. I hate, uh, I, I, I hate, hate, hate this term that some fans and some veterans want to throw around like, this is not pro wrestling. No, pro wrestling's whatever we make it. Pro wrestling's whatever that we want it to be on that day. There's no right, there's no wrong in professional wrestling. It's flavors of ice cream. It's what you may like and someone else may not like. It's what they may like and you may not like. I don't understand why everyone has to get their panties all twisted up because they just can't accept the fact that other people are going to like things that they don't like. Fantastic. Um, and just, just, just one more. Um, you seem to be having possibly the best run of your entire career in Impact Wrestling right now. What can you attribute that to? It can be contributed to my, my give a shit being broken. For, for years, I tried to be who other people wanted me to be, or I allowed people to get in my ear and tell me, oh, this is who you should be, until finally my give a shit was broken. I was like, you know what? I'm going to be who I want to be. I'm going to be who I am, and it's going to work. And if it doesn't work, that's on me. And I'd rather go down swinging and fighting, doing something I believe in, and go da- than go down not doing something I believed in. I think I've done that over the past year and a half of Impact Wrestling. Not only have I put Impact Wrestling on fire, I put myself on fire, I put a lot of other people on fire. And maybe it's time that Sammy Callahan gets the praise he deserves for how much of a genius he actually is. Dan Strait, 100%. Thank you very much, Sammy, for your time. Is that, is that egotistical me calling myself a genius? Cause if it Hell no. Give a shit. No, 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 no. If, if you're not going to call yourself a genius, who is? You need to have that self-belief, which obviously you have. So carry on, brother. Hi, Ross. Hi, Sammy. Mike Pankow from Windy City Slam. How are you guys doing today? Hello. Who are you? Yeah, Mike Pankow from Windy City Slam. How are you doing, guys? Windy City Slam, I'm guessing, does that take place in Chicago? Yes, indeed, sir. Look at me. I told you I'm a genius. Windy City, <laughs> Chicago. Yeah, I, get you're right on. I get that. You're right on it, Sammy. <laughs> yeah, quick um, question for you. Um, what makes Impact Wrestling and the brand of Impact Wrestling stand out from all the uh, other major companies out there? That they're not afraid to ruffle some feathers. That they're not afraid to go out and try new things. That they're not trying to make wrestling so much PG that it's only for children. They're trying to make wrestling for everybody. It's everybody a little bit of taste to what they want. They do hardcore. They do intergender. They do great knockouts wrestling matches. They do awesome technical matches. They do awesome strong style matches. They, they have amazing Lucha Libre matches. Uh, for instance, we're going to Mexico here next week to film television, and that will be a different atmosphere of a show than anywhere else we feel about. And that's one of the great things about Impact Wrestling right now. It truly is one of the most versatile companies walking this planet today. And they're not afraid who they upset. They're not afraid who they offend. Because at the end of the day, that's the kind of wrestling people want. People want wrestling to be like it was in the Attitude Era. And Impact Wrestling is the only company to actually have the balls to go out there and do it. Over the last couple of years, Sammy, uh, the company has kind of taken a turn in terms of the philosophy. Um, yeah, there are still a handful of older guys in the company, but now it's a lot of younger, hungrier talents. Uh, is that kind of how you're seeing it, too? 100% Impact Wrestling for years upon years upon years, and right now is no different. Impact Wrestling makes stars. You, you, you see people become stars, and they go somewhere else. They're, they're still the star that they made in Impact Wrestling. Some of other companies' biggest stars of all time now have came from Impact Wrestling. All right, Sammy and Ross, thank you guys very much. Thanks, Mike.
Hey, Ross, here's a question for you. Go ahead. Hey, uh, hold on, hey, hold on, Riju, hold on, Riju. Okay. I got, okay. I got a serious question for Ross. This is a life or death situation. How do you like your bacon cooked, Ross? Do you like it kind of soft? Do you like it really crunchy and hard? Do you like it somewhere in the middle? Some reason I, I fear how I'm going to answer this question. Uh, I'll say crispy. Okay. I like your style. I like it really crispy with just a little bit of fat on it. It's the best. I'm eating it right now. What kind of pizza are we going to get in Chicago? Pepperoni, bro. Pepperoni or meat lovers are the only kind of pizza. Or buffalo chicken. I love me a good buffalo chicken pizza. Would you trust me on some Luminati sausage? I will. I will trust I... you on some Illuminati sausage. And you know what? We can probably get Jake to, to, to pay for it. Oh, why would Jake pay for it? I'm still the draw. People need to realize that. I'm I mean, no offense. Draw. He is the exhibition champion right now. I'm just throwing oh, the facts out there. Well, he's the exhibition champion. And I saw Hunky Dory, but here in a couple months, I'll be Impact World Champion. Do, do you forget that I'm the number one contender? I beat Tessa Blanchard for the second time, become number one contender, and now I'm going to take my rightful spot as the face of this company. But I beat Brian Cage again. People seem to also forget that I was the first person to beat Brian Cage in Impact. Do you not think I can do that again when all the chips are down on the table? Well, no, I'm, I'm 100% with you. And I'm actually going to ask Riju to hold on one more second because the way you segued into uh, the World Championship, I want to take a quick question that came through on YouTube. Uh, boy, this guy really gives me a tough name. I think it's Hey Preezy. It could be Prezi, but it's Preezy, I believe. Hey Preezy. Preezy. Right. Sammy. For <laughs> I'm a rapper. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Sammy, what's the first thing you'll do once you win the Impact World title? He follows that up with, I hope it's something bizarre. Oh, first thing I'm going to do is the Impact World World title. Once I win the Impact World title, I'm going live on Facebook and I'm telling everyone to kiss my ass because Sammy Callahan is the face of a major wrestling company. Okay. That's it. Riju, floor is open for you. Thank you, Russ. Uh, this is Riju from Sports Kira. Uh, how are you doing, Sammy? I'm fantastic. I am uh, enjoying my lunch, which is turkey, bacon, and avocado. How are you doing? I am doing great. Uh, my question, and I know you're going to yell at me, uh, do you think a golden draw outranks a draw? No. The draw is just the draw. That's, that's the, the whole thing. He has to add extra golden or extra many. The draw is the draw. At the end of the day, the draw is a draw. It doesn't matter if he wants to add something. Again, if, I don't know why you're trying to turn me and Jake against each other. Jake's my best friend, and we're never going to fight. We're never actually going to fight. He's my best friend. I'm happy for him, okay? Leave it at that. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, apart from Tessa Blanchard, are there other knockouts that you want to uh, probably face in the ring in Impact Wrestling? Russell Tyre at... Lucha Underground had one of the best matches of the third season. I'd love to go toe to toe Ty again. Or if the big girl Havoc wants to go at it, we can go at it. We wrestled each other when we were younger on the independence scene, and we tore it down. I, I'm saying right now, I don't care if it's man, female, animal. I'm going to have matches here with anyone that I wrestle. Uh, speaking of animals, what are your thoughts on, on Rhino arriving in the roster? Rhino can get his ass beat too. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm happy that Ryder's back. He's another big star and a guy that's hungry, and his give a shit's broken right now, too. So he's going to be a dangerous person. But Robin Rhino back in Impact is a great thing for me because then I get a pinch to beat him. Okay. And my final question is what do you think of the fact that your match with Tessa went after the world title match? It, well, it should have been the main event. I should be the main event of every slam anniversary. They tried not to put me on the main event last year with Pentagon Jr. And what happened? We had match of the year. So, me and Tessa Blanchard, a history-making match being the main event of Slammiversary just made sense. I have a pretty good feeling that's probably going to win match of the year for this year as well. Thank you so much. Can't believe Riju did not ask when we're coming back to India. Sorry, Riju. I might have had a breaking story for you, but you didn't ask. Hi, Ross. Hi, Sammy. This is Queen from Brain Buster Radio. How are you? Brain Buster Radio. That's a good move. 
Thank right? you. Right? It is a good move. We, we agree. <laughs> yeah, we can agree on that. Maybe that's cool. It, but we can agree on that. Hey, if I got one thing we agree on, I'm cool with that. <laughs> Brain so, Buster. Jushin Thunder Liger has the best Brain Buster of all time, just saying. I don't disagree. There. I don't disagree. So, with all of the momentum that you've been building as the draw, are we looking at the next world champion? And will we 100%. be seeing you uh, take down the machine Brian Cage? And if so, Sammy, how are you going to defend and hold that title? I'm systematically break down the machine, Brian Cage. Uh, I, I don't think it's rocket science to know that right now his back is seriously injured. His back is seriously injured. Ever since he took that Spanish fly off the rampway from John Morrison at the pay-per-view, when he first won the championship, he has been injured and he's never been the same. And I see the chinks in his armor and I see what I got to do to beat him. I have a game plan for everything. and This is no different. Yeah, absolutely. I'm I'm not surprised that you do. So with uh, changing gears just a little bit, with you and Tessa being at the forefront of professional wrestling, not even going to use intergender, professional wrestling, what do you contribute? Good, I like your style. Thank you. You actually <laughs> listen. I try. Uh, what do you contribute the success of this trailblazing program that Impact is providing you this platform for you both? And for you personally, me where awesome. does this... <laughs> me, being, me being the best professional wrestler walking this planet today, and anything you put in front of me, I'm going to turn into gold. I, I, I've showed this for the last year and a half, and I don't understand why people are still surprised at the outcome. That anything that Impact Wrestling has put in front of me, I've knocked out of the park. Yes, for sure. So for you personally, where does this program rank within your legacy of professional wrestling? Top five automatically because it's such a history-making Dude, it's something that hasn't been done in years and never been done on this level. There's never been a time where equality has actually been reached until now with Impact Wrestling. Absolutely. And, you know, good on you and good on Tessa and even better on Impact for allowing this to happen. Thank yeah. you so much. I'd love to just start doing interspecies wrestling matches. Uh, bring in a gorilla, <laughs> bring in a giraffe. I'd love to see a rhino actually face rhino. I mean, that's my dream match if I'm... If I'm, if I'm a bed man, that's my dream match. <laughs> well, I love that answer. Thank you so uh, very much for your time. Versus a moose. A moose versus a That'd moose. Be good. That would be good. That, that would be, be really good. cool. A little dangerous, but really cool. <laughs> nah, Thank you so much. That'd be fine. That'd probably it. Sammy, for pure entertainment, who, who's, who's in uh, against Josh? Josh Matthews? A yeah. weasel. Like hearing that. He's like a weasel. You get it? Like Bobby the Brain, a weasel. <laughs> See, I could be a stand up comedian, Ross. I really could. I'm at, freaking I'm 100% sick. with you on that. Hi, Ross. Hi, Sammy. This is Stephanie from Theatre Magazine UK. How are you guys? Hi. How are you? Uh, went to the dentist. It hurts. <laughs> um, I thank you for your words uh, at the beginning of this uh, press pass. Uh, I can tell you that from France, my country, we are completely with with you in in the United States. Um, that's very important. Um, my question was, um, Born, Clo uh, Born for Glory will, will be, uh, the second anniversary of your debut on Impact Wrestling. You, uh, you've been the match of the year, the rest of the year, everything. Uh, so many, rest you are everything, year, whatever. Of the year, moment of the year, I pretty much won all the Moment of the year, uh, break, uh, this year. you did, 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 uh, I'm gonna say that, um, this intergender match, uh, do you think it's, Let's not call it intergender. Let's so call it just pro everything that. that you did before or not? Or it's just another 
a way to show how good you are. I am sorry. I did not understand the final bit of your question. So if you could please repeat it, that would be fantastic. Sorry, sorry. Uh, it's okay. It's just sorry. Uh, uh, I, I, again. Totally uh, I, I wish it would be so much. It would be way easier. Oh, it would be very nice. Uh, you know what? I I'm going to start learning French. Ross, get me Rosetta Stone, put it on the company's tab. I'm learning French, Spanish, and German. Why do you need all of them? Uh, she, she speaks. She speaks French. Maybe I will know German and Spanish as well. Oh, great! More expenses. I gotta get approved. <laughs> no, I was asking you. You, you've been there. You, Bound for Glory will be the, the second anniversary of you coming debuting on Impact. Uh, you've made it all. Um, is doing this intergent equal match uh, is the you think the best you have the, the, the best of everything you've done on Impact what so you're asking me what I think is the best thing I've done on Impact yeah is that your question I think everything <laughs> to be honest I'm not going to just pick one thing everything my feud of Eddie Edwards knocked it out of the park my feud with Pentagon Jr. knocked it out of the park. My feud with Rich Swan knocked it out of the park. My feud with Tessa Blanchard knocked that out of the park. And now me winning the Impact World Championship, I'm going to knock that out of the park too. Did you feel any difference? Uh, we speak about equal with wrestling. Um, but... When you, you came to the ring and ready to face Tessa uh, and wrestling Tessa, did, did, you, were, did you feel a difference in the way you were moving um, uh, if, and in the match? Or do you really, uh, were you really the same as you, as if you were wrestling, I don't know, uh, Eddie Edwards. I wrestled Tessa Blanchard like I wrestled everyone else. It would be terrible for this whole movement right now with this intergender wrestling becoming just pro wrestling. If I went out and treated Tessa Blanchard like she was beneath me. I went out there and I treated her like an equal. And like I said, we knocked it out of the park. Uh, Tessa is an amazing professional wrestler. Female or male, Tessa is an amazing professional wrestler. She is. Um, you both demonstrated. She can't beat me, though. She can't beat me, obviously. But a lot of men can't beat me either, so I'm not holding that against her. You, you both demonstrated uh, how great you are, the Slammiversary and even at Unbreakable. Um... We, you said you would compete against against any woman uh, in in the roster. Uh, another possibility is teaming with a woman, and uh, who would you choose as uh, a partner? Well, I'm were in the mix. Bias, I would one hundred percent pick Jessica Havoc. She's the most badass woman in the entire Knockouts division right now. And we have some history. So I would team with Jessica Havoc because I team with her on the independence. I team with her around the world and I would love to team with her at Impact if I ever need to get a female partner. And just one last thing because uh, we talked a lot uh, on Trespass over the last two years and we know that everything is possible with you because Kamikarian is everything. Uh, but do you have some limits, personal limits, um, things that sometimes say, no, no, sorry, I can't do that? No, there's no limits for me. I'm open to any situation, any kind of match, anywhere around the world, and I think I've proved that. 
I've proved that I can do Lucha Libre with the Luchadors down in Mexico. I've proved I can do strong style for the best strong style wrestlers in the world in Japan. I've proved that I can go old school in Memphis. I've proved I can do death matches with the best death match wrestlers on the planet. Any style, anyone, anywhere, I can do it. That's great. That's great. Um, so I can tell you, you know, just to add in front, merci. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much, Sammy. It's always a pleasure. Thank you. Always. Thank you. So we're going to switch to a uh, question from Colton King via Facebook. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to assume this is right up your alley, but I, I actually don't even know. What is your favorite Fortnite skin, weapon, and drop point? Uh, favorite skin right now, there's this new pug character. He has a dog face. He wears a hoodie. I me a lot of myself. He's totally badass. Been using him a lot lately. Favorite drop point. Favorite drop point is nine times out of ten block or hog fills. I like that section of the map uh, because that's where I just always drop. We've got a lot of wins. We've got a lot of dubs. Uh, also been playing a lot of Apex recently, so uh, Apex is a good one. Squad wipe someone three instantaneous knockdowns from Mozambique. <laughs> Who else can say that? No one, because I'm the best, obviously. Samuel, why didn't you win that uh, Fortnite uh, $3 million tournament? Well, maybe if Impact Wrestling would get me in these tournaments, maybe I could win them. Okay. There we go. Uh, I'm actually another question that came in, which I'm again I'm not even sure on this as well. Uh, we've been going for about thirty minutes, Sammy, and you have not once mentioned Telly Monster, Beaker, or Scooter. Well, we're not talking about the Muppets right now, and if we want to talk about the Muppets, we can talk about the Muppets because I love the Muppets. I wish I could have my best friend could be a Muppet. The only way I'd ever replace Jake Chris with my best friend if I had a legitimate Muppet as my best friend. Imagine OVE with a Muppet. That would be sweet. You know which, mu- sweet. which Muppet would join OVE? Mm, who would we take? I don't know. Maybe we take Scooter so we can pick on him all the time. He's smart. We need another smart guy like me in the group. Hey, Sammy, Ryan Bowman from TheGorillaPosition.com. Um, since uh, you came into Impact, you and OBE have been getting some of the biggest reactions from the, the audience. Who were some of your influences in terms of psychology and in terms of communicating with a live crowd? Number one, Terry Funk's one of my biggest influences. Uh, since I was younger, Terry, Terry Funk's always been one of my favorites. Terry Funk, Stone Cold, Steve Austin. Uh, but on like a real level, like just people that I've actually worked with in my career, uh, I'd have to say Billy Gunn, Tommy Dreamer are two of my biggest influences in all professional wrestling and really showing how to hold a crowd in the palm of your hand. Another one, people may love or hate him, but Terry Taylor has taught me a ton in my time. And uh, I've got a really good chance just to learn from some of the best wrestlers that's ever walked this planet. I have to tell you, I had a conversation a couple of weeks ago with Kevin Sullivan, and he compared you to the Kevin late Brian Sullivan Pillman. Too. Kevin yeah, Sullivan he called you a genius, as a matter of fact. He also called you a genius. <laughs> He's uh, kind of taking me under his wing, and he tells me every time he sees me, he wants to read me when I grow up. So uh, that's that's kind of a cool thing. Like Kevin is one of the smartest minds to ever book in professional wrestling, and being able to sit under his learning tree for a bit has been extremely precious to my career. Absolutely. Well, thank you for your time today. Hi, Sammy. Uh, good evening from a very sunny Scotland. It's Lee Med here from Alive 107.3. Thank you for taking the time, my friend. You are welcome, Scotland. All of Scotland, not just you. Uh, cheers, my friend. Uh, Sammy, let's be honest. You have been nothing short of incredible since you arrived in Impact Wrestling, very much the, the focus of the company for for realistically the past nine, maybe even 12 months, you're in high-profile matches each and every week on Impact. Uh, and now as we approach Bound for Glory, your chance to grab that word title and make it your own. Can I ask, how much pressure 
do you think you're going to feel when you take that world title for yourself? And is that a different pressure, uh, being the world champion, from being the face of the company, which uh, many people would say you are just now? I've been preparing for this my entire life, specifically in the last two years. This is what I've wanted. I've wanted to be the face of a major company, and I'm about to do it. And I'm going to set the wrestling world on fire once again. I'm going to set the wrestling world upside down. The pressure isn't really a factor to, to me because I perform better under pressure. I've, I've always felt pressure my entire career. It's just something I've learned to cope with and just turn off. When I'm out there in the ring, nothing else matters. I don't hear anyone. I don't see anyone. I'm in a tiny black box painting the picture that I want to paint. When you when you say you're in there, you're in the ring, you're very much in the zone. And as a performer, as a fan, I really enjoy seeing you like that. How easy is it for you to, I don't want to say, switch off the, the Sammy Callahan persona? How, how easy is it for you to to relax when you get out of the ring and you're not as intense, I, I'm guessing, as you are on screen? I'm a pretty intense person. It's just something that I've learned. It, it's on all the time. Hmm. It, it's harder these days to just turn it off because it's become part of who I am. Hmm. I, one of the things that obviously you, you do do when you're, when you're trying to calm down when you, when you have spare time you mentioned before was the Muppet I have to ask a question Muppet Babies good thing bad thing say it one more time you broke up the, Mu- the Muppet Babies a good thing or a bad thing amazing thing I still randomly <laughs> watch Muppet Baby episodes and I, I want to know why this giant lady has this entire slew of a nursery that's a completely full of aliens chickens animals and complete gargoyles like, I want to know where and how she got this job. That's the real story. It's one of these questions that has never, ever been answered and probably never will be. Uh, and just if I can ask both you and Ross this question, uh, here in the UK, just under a year ago, uh, Sammy, you were here as part of Impact Wrestling versus the UK uh, Wrestling Media Con. When can we expect to see you back in the UK carrying that Impact World title next? You never know, man. I come to I come to England through my last eight years of my career very frequently, but uh, over the past probably year, I haven't been over there as much because I've been extremely busy in the United States, not only with my bookings here with Impact Wrestling, but also with running my company, The Wrestling Revolver. There's only so much time in the day. There's only so many days in a week and a month and a year, but you know Sammy Callahan will be back in England. I'm going to kick it down like I always do. Good, great. Ross, have you got anything to, to input to this time? As far as uh, back overseas? You b- back here to the UK, yeah. Uh, nothing nothing right now, nothing to to announce right now. Okay, well, I, I look forward to, to hearing that announcement when I'm sure it'll become pretty soon. Guys, thank you very much for the time, and Sally, good luck, not that you'll need it, at Bound for Glory. Thanks, Lee. Hey, Sam, I got to ask you, uh, kind of, uh, hear, the, hear the question out before you, you chime in. Brian Cage brings a, a size and strength advantage over you. You have the advantage of, you've beaten him before, and you have OVE lurking in the background. Talk about how that can, those two factors can play in. I don't need OVE to beat Brian Cage. I don't need OVE to beat anyone. People need to realize that. I systematically plan exactly what I want to do, and then I accomplish that. Brian Cage is injured right now, and I'm going to pick apart his injured back like no one ever has before. So you're not even worried about size or strength advantage that he has over no. you? I prefer to wrestle big meatheads like Brian Cage because they're easier to outsmart. All right. Uh, Murray H. via Facebook wants to know... Uh, is your use of the pile driver an homage to anyone in particular? Mick Foley. Mick Foley gave me that move. Look at Twitter. He physically gave me his version of the pile driver and it's been my finish ever since. There you go, Murray. That's the answer to your question. <laughs> hey, Sammy, it's the Yeti again, WrestlingNewsSource.com and Irish Whip. Hey, just two last ones, and I think they're pretty big. 
uh, you've talked about development and being the, the face of impact. How much has um, the development of your character in the feud with Eddie Edwards and the bat been up until now? Well, what exactly do you mean? Rephrase your question a little bit. You're, you're confusing the draw. Yeah. Uh, rewind a year ago. Did you think at the point in time um, with the incident with Eddie that it would be what it is today as far as uh, shit happens in the business? You work with it and you make yourself very successful either way. Person. I make anything that's handed to me work. And it's just another thing I was able to exploit, make myself a bigger star. And it's the same reason every six months I do something that gets people talking. I've never been a wrestler just to stay the same person. I've evolved. I've changed my entire wrestling career. And do you think, man, just follow up, like in this world of people that label it independence or people that label it contract, people that label it free agents, people that label it whatever they these new marks label this stuff. Um, like how invested are you in your craft and your work with impact today, as opposed to, uh, when you first started, man, I it, see, that's the thing. I'm invested in anything I do. I don't half ass it. Anything I do, I'm going to do 125%, no matter it be going golfing for leisure or being an impact wrestling or being anywhere else I wrestle around the world. And the reason I asked that question is because I talked, we talked to Joseph Samuel this last week and Kevin Sullivan continues to come up on a, on a more frequent basis. And it just seems like everybody that surrounds themselves with him and, and just what they're doing is exactly that dude, a hundred percent. And we appreciate you, man. We do. hundred percent. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Uh, hi again, guys. Stephanie uh, from Steel Chair Magazine, and I have a real serious question to ask you. Do you really make Madman Fulton watch The Little Mermaid before wrestling? I don't make him watch anything. That's his favorite movie. He watches that on his own. If I don't put it in, he gets upset at this point. No, uh, it 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 was a kind of joke, but it was so funny when you said it on television that um, um, that for me watching the Little Mermaid is making me sleep. So whatever, I uh, just wanted to uh, uh, ask you uh, on a personal level because David and Jake are your brothers. Uh, how do you feel? when Jake uh, won the silver belt. I don't know why anyone even said I'm upset that Jake won the X Division title. I'm extremely happy that Jake's the X Division champion. He brought the X Division champion to OVE. Just like I'm going to bring the Impact World Championship to OVE. Just like, you never know, Fulton and Dave might bring the Tag Team Championships to OVE. I'm saying by the end of the year, OVE is going to be walking around with all the gold. But I can't wait to see Dave and Madman with the tag titles, Jake with the silver titles, and you with the the world title. And you know, it's something I wanna. I've I have already told you something I wanna see. So O V E O V E is about everything on Impact now. Thank you again, uh, Sammy. Thank you very much. Hey, Sammy, uh, Riju from Sportskita again. My question is, how did you come up with the idea of making phlegm or mucus part of your gimmick? Something that just kind of happened. Something that, uh, I'm, I guess I'm just a dirty human being, and it's uh, one of the most disrespectful acts you can do to somebody. Okay. Uh, and my final question is, uh, do you think in due course of time, we could possibly see Tessa as the Impact World Champion? I'm going to be Impact World Champion. There's no question uh, asked. Uh, no, Tessa Blanchard, I mean. Tessa Blanchard. As long as I have the Impact World Championship, when I win it, Tessa Blanchard will never beat me for the Impact World Championship. Because like I said before, Tessa Blanchard will not beat me. 
Tessa Blanchard will never beat me. I've beaten her two times in a row. I've, I've mopped the floor with Tessa Blanchard. She can be a good professional wrestler all she wants, but she's not the draw. Okay, thank you so much. All righty, Sammy. Well, with that, we're going to wrap it up for this week. I appreciate your time very much. Uh, I'll give you the floor for a final thought. Final thought? Sammy Callahan is going to become the Impact World Champion. And Sammy Callahan... Sammy, where are you? Did you fall off? I believe Sammy dropped. He dropped out of us. Well, it wasn't uh, It wasn't at the start, so uh, we'll end it at that point. I'm, I'm sure Sammy's going to try to call back in or try to blame it on me, but uh, Sammy just dropped his call. Uh, Media, thank you very much for calling in. We will be back with you probably not next week because uh, we will be in Mexico City 